Now, is it possible to see Alien and Predator in Marvel Contest of Champions? That is an exciting concept, which may actually be a possibility in the future. And we're going to go over why and also the extent of like how this came to be in the first place. Uh, and obviously I'm recording this for a different setup because I'm like, I want to change it up. I want to record it in a different format. It doesn't always have to be green screen. So at the start of this week or maybe like uh, five days ago, so coming into about like seven days now, we got this kind of announcement that Marvel Comics has acquired the rights to both Alien and Predator. And what does this mean for the MCU? Now, obviously, that's the, the article talking about it. You know, could we see it in the likes of uh, Avengers? Could we see it a case that they could bring the universes together? I don't know if it really works to bring those two universes together. And I feel the universes should be separated out extensively because the narrative is more, uh, you know, guts and gore and that kind of stuff. And it works better for those kind of things being away from that unless and this is the problem with like what Disney's emphasis is as to like what the MCU is and how it kind of interacts with both of them but as well having something that's a bit different the same way that Deadpool is really meant to be like an 18 plus or rated R uh, and how that works is best to keep them separate either way it's exciting to see that there's been this acquisition and also the possibilities for the future however the artist David Fincher is optimistic that they would actually kind of be put into the movies and obviously why this is important to build this narrative and structure to this particular video is to look at why they could be what other games have done in the past with movie releases and how we could actually see maybe MCU versions that may be toned down but as well a formidable foe for the likes of the Avengers. It doesn't have to be about powers, it can be about brute strength and some kind of mutated base alien life form that could take on the Avengers or any other Marvel characters for that matter. And obviously seeing this Marvel print like this where you've got uh, Avengers Tower and what looks like to be an Iron Man helmet uh, which looked to be attached to some sort of like robotic AI. I mean I'm not going to say that that's, that is or isn't uh, Tony Stark's spinal column and neck. Uh, either way that would be pretty vicious. Late last week this obviously spilled over to the forums for discussion. Not like a load of people were discussing it but it is interesting to think that it could be a possibility to see these characters actually be put into Marvel Contest of Champions down the line. And it's not the first and I doubt it would be the last time you actually see like movie versions, characters from different universes and movie franchises actually go into games. With uh, Injustice 2 and Warner Brothers using their, their Warner Brothers Entertainment to take uh, properties like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and put it into the likes of Injustice 2. Which I think was, uh, was definitely like a pretty cool stroke to like say like you know let's put some of these characters in it makes it really exciting and interesting and spices things up when it comes to uh, to gameplay and other stuff like that there's also been other times like Mortal Kombat has kind of gone into Injustice as well and shared rights between the likes of Injustice which has uh, NetherRealm Studios and obviously Warner Brothers uh, interactive entertainment for the point of obviously using characters from cross games I think is really cool it's a nice concept it spices things up as I said and yeah like Warner Brothers interactive entertainment owns so many different kind of like properties I mean they could they could try and see if they could put some really obscure characters into there I'm not to say that they they would or wouldn't put like middle earth kind of like um Lord of the Rings style stuff in maybe they could maybe they couldn't I mean that would that would be interesting weird and cool but obviously I, I think sometimes they want to keep stuff separate and, and obviously to uh to not take away from the narrative of what kind of game they're trying to create I mean recently we had the likes of uh, Robocop and Terminator actually being put into uh to Mortal Kombat and they've done stuff like this before Mortal Kombat has always put in different things like characters which are movie versions of stuff, but they've done it at a point of just guest kind of like things. And each type of uh, Mortal Kombat has seen something original, something different, which obviously, you know, they may have said, look, for this edition of Mortal Kombat, we're going to put in a versions of Robocop and Terminator. And the next time it may not even be those, uh, those characters, which this kind of like point here uh, alludes to that. Uh, Robocop's uh, addition continues a legacy, uh, if this clicks off, legacy of famous guest stars appearing as DLC in recent Mortal Kombat games, including the likes of Terminator and Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger, I missed up there. 
Actor Peter Weller, who portrayed Robocop, the first two films, is coming back to voice Mortal Kombat Incarnation, along with 80s action Cyborg Aftermath, will bring uh, back Mortal Kombat's fighters Shiva and uh, Fujin, so as well, like, they use it as a point to put in the old characters, but as well, these movie characters as well, which I thought was, you know, it's kind of cool, especially having, like, Freddy Krueger, um, and so, like, that, that's kind of, like, finger on the pulse with doing something unique and weird with games, which, you know, I like, and... Yeah, having these two in, especially because they're quite synonymous as uh, like cyborgs, uh, having Terminator and um, and Robocop in is pretty cool. But you know that that goes then back to like the explanation as to why games try to bring these characters in is a right to, and I'm sure that it will be mixed feelings to see if you could say like right, well, you know, you could see the likes of uh, Predator in Marvel Contest the Champions. I don't know if it would be something Caban would ever consider doing, and especially it does go back to that kind of uh, weird thinking like, right, well, we're going to try and keep these universes separate, and I don't know if I see it likely that they'd ever go, right, let's put in Predator, because that fits as a good opponent to, um, I don't know, Sabretooth for Juggernaut. The fact is, you know, it would be good competition in sport to say that Predator would be hunting the likes of mutants or um, different characters. Could you have that Predator has a cosmic um, uh, cosmic power source that is given to it? Like the Predator becomes a herald of Galactus. Imagine that. And then is able to uh, take on uh, like some really powerful forces. You know, yeah, there could be so many more aspects to evolution of alien and predator the xenomorph is kind of a it's a very one-dimensional character that's kind of boring um and there's not really much to it except for like it just exists as a thing to do st stuff which i suppose predator is as well however though it's not really like it has no consciousness to, to actually communicate yes it communicates with other xenomorphs but it doesn't really do much if anything except for just i'd say reproduced eat shit that's basically it um there's nothing more to it it's not evolved um predator seems to be like it would have more of a it has more of a purpose and uh sometimes there's conscious uh consciousness to uh to what it's doing i, I think sometimes it's even kind of displayed other kind of emotions as well xenomorphs do not so therefore it's just a, it's just a one dimensional character either way like you know i would be excited to see it in the game because it would be truly original and weird but at the same time i do feel that these universes would best serve to be separate and i doubt that caban would think that this would be an option to put in in future but we'll have to see imagine having iron man not tony stark and not robert downey jr's version versus predator in an upcoming film uh, like i don't know um uh, stark's daughter going up against this maybe uh, spider-man going up against predator could it be a possibility? I don't know. Anyway, thoughts in the comments section. By the way, there is links in the description to the chat, the, the character, the character wish list, where we've got uh, people already talking. Seems to be that people uh, enjoy the idea, but I don't know if we could um, we could actually see it down the line. But still, it's good to know that the community seems some kind of interest in this. And yeah, thoughts in the comment section down below. And also, don't forget to check out some recent content, which should be pinging up around here somewhere. And uh, I'll see you later on for another video. Bye bye for now.